If you enjoy earthy tones in your paintings, I've stumbled upon a unique type of colored pencils that turns out to be water suitable as well. Hi, I'm Françoise, welcome or welcome back to my channel. And these pencils are not watercolor pencils or ink pencils, almost. They're tinted charcoal pencils. Nowhere on this box does it say these very special pencils are water suitable, but I found out by accident and I told the story already in my previous video, so I'll link that in the description if you want to watch it later. I started experimenting a few days ago and my first easy step was to swatch the colors. And I was surprised right away to find that the pencils do feel like charcoal 100%. For some reason, I thought there would be some kind of a binder or something in there to make them feel like regular colored pencils, less chalky. And the bottom line is that they're labeled as colored charcoal pencils and that is really what they are. And with that feature in mind, you can see how visible those charcoal lines are underneath when I blended each one of the 24 colors on my ash cold press watercolor paper. At this point, I was worried the colors might be too light once blended on a painting and I also didn't like the visible lines underneath but I thought I would be able to apply my watercolor pencil techniques to these pencils, so it's easy to make the paint look watercolor smooth and vibrant. And I also noticed a lot of the colors looked similar, with just a few light tones, even though all main colors you could think of are represented in the color names. Next, I was curious to see how these pencils compare when they're used as charcoal pencils versus water soluble pencils. So I started with something simple like a sphere. I went with a standard colored pencil approach, just color and layer. And I knew from using Blackstone recently that a blending stump would allow me to get a basic charcoal drawing to look smooth. And I picked a hot press watercolor paper this time to make it easier since it's much smoother than cold press. The funny thing is I had had a bad charcoal experience at the beginning of my art journey four years ago that made me think that I didn't like the medium, but I can see all the work and wisdom from failing and pushing through has compounded even though this is not my main thing because the sphere felt really enjoyable and easy to create. It's like once you've gained experience with one medium, it's easier to apply some of the knowledge to other mediums. Learning to observe the reference to place the highlights, shadows, and midtones properly. Also use convenient and good quality supplies. And finally, take the time to layer and refine the colors is what I think helps me manage everything that I try. I repeated the exercise on the right with the exact same colors and the same process. And this time, I left the blending stump aside because I blended everything with water and there were hardly any lines showing thanks to the smooth paper, I think, and also the fact that I layered and overlapped colors each time with circular motions to keep the coloring even and fill out the tooth of the paper. Again, different techniques but similar results when you have the main skills down. Something very interesting here though. Not only do colors on the watercolor-like version look more vibrant than the ones that were not wet, but also check this out. When I ran my finger on both, notice how pigments in the standard charcoal drawing lifted and how the ones I activated with water didn't. And this is huge because for us painting enthusiasts, it really shows that charcoal can be used without the mess, but also more vibrancy in the colors. After this successful exercise, you can imagine I felt confident for more. And I've been craving painting more landscapes lately, so I went for a lighthouse scenery. I don't like very bright colors in summer paintings, but at the same time, you don't want to fall into the extreme opposite of ending up with turn colors, so I knew there would be a challenge here, and these pencils would literally reveal their true colors with this kind of reference photo. So I started using the charcoal pencils like I would watercolor pencils, right on my plastic palette. This palette is special because the rough side allows pencil pigments to deposit more easily. And then the goal is to activate the pigment with water to create a swatch to use for painting smooth washes of paint. It while it's easy with watercolor pencils to color on this palette, I found it to be more challenging with the charcoal pencils and you wouldn't have this issue if you were to use a scrap piece of watercolor paper instead. 
And that was until I repeated the experience while the palette was still wet from activating the paint previously, and it turned out to be a lot easier that way. You can see I even managed to get that dreamy watercolor look in the sky especially, so I can say these charcoal pencils work very well if you want to get this type of effect. I was a bit worried at first because the first layer was very light, but once I figured out how to get more pigment on my swatches, it was a lot easier to get the colors to show better. One thing I noticed is that the leads are pretty fragile, and sometimes it also comes from the pencil sharpener. Some work better than others, so it was a bit difficult to get these pencils to a sharp point, but I managed and I also used my final paintbrush to create the thin lines. Overall, I found these charcoal pencils to behave closely to watercolor pencils. I really love the muted outcome and I don't think it looks boring and actually this painting will be up on my Patreon in real time next week. I've provided all alternatives for watercolor pencils or ink intense pencils, so you can paint it even if you don't have these charcoal pencils. To explore any kind of pencil's full potential, it's interesting to try it out on a detailed painting, and lately I've been doing more animal paintings, so I decided to try my first cat painting because I've only painted cat's eyes before. The process was recorded, so you can paint it along on Patreon as well, and I will release that one in August. Fur is difficult to paint, but I think with water soluble pencils of any kind, it's easier to paint it than a wood with watercolors, especially if like me, you're a perfectionist and you don't do well with loose fur. I started on wet to block the main colors in, because with pencils it can quickly become tedious to color everything from scratch, and that was especially true for the blanket. Then the fun began as I added the hair with all my colors one by one. Remember these charcoal pencils aren't easy to sharpen, they break with my pencil sharpener if I go too far, but I still managed to always have sharp edges on them, so it was fairly easy to make fine hair, even though the drawing isn't that big. The white charcoal pencils was very useful to create grayish tones by just overlapping onto darker areas, so with these tinted charcoal pencils, you can use a lot of the same techniques as watercolor pencils or even colored pencils. I love the atmosphere they render with the beautiful muted colors, so if you like the vibe, I can only recommend you to try them out. I used my favorite watercolor pencil technique to blend the hair carefully, which also allows the charcoal pigment to set in the paper and not come off afterwards. And I opted for gouache for the white highlights in the eyes and the whiskers because once more I wanted to make sure whatever addition I made was there to stay and I didn't want to use white charcoal there and having to blend it for such fine details. I think white gouache or white watercolor or even a white gel pen, if you use them sparingly, are still best in those paintings for the crisp highlights. Right now I'm challenging myself to paint 100 animals on etch of postcards with water soluble graphite and watercolor pencils, so go follow me on Instagram to check that out, and I'll link my account in the description. But first, to learn my watercolor pencil blending techniques and avoid a muddy mess in your paintings, you might want to watch this video. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time!